the Lord. You are welcome to today. My name is Godwin Emwere. Uh, this is the Word of Hope uh, segment of the Inspire TV. Uh, it's a privilege to share with you the Word of God today. And then I want to talk on you are God's address. You are God's address. The world we live in is in trouble. And that's not surprising because that's what the Bible says. That darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. Let's look at another scripture in Malachi chapter 4 and verse 1. For you to know that the world is in trouble. And it's only in God that there is hope. The book of Malachi chapter 4 and verse 1. It says, Behold, I'm reading from the King James Version. The day cometh that shall burn as oven, and all that proud, yea, all that do wickedly shall be stubble. The day shall, that cometh shall burn them more, say the Lord of hosts. It shall leave them neither roots nor branch. If you look at what is happening in the world, it is in line with the word of God. There is no hope out there. But that's not the whole story. The story is that you, as a child of God, you are the solution to the generation. Hallelujah. If you are born again, the whole creation is waiting for your manifestation. That's what Romans chapter 8 verse 19 says. It says, the whole creature is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. That is those that are born again. So, why is the Christian to the solution to the world's problem? God said in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 16, I will dwell in them. This is God talking. And I will walk in them. So God is dwelling on the believer. Jesus speaking says the kingdom of God is within you. If the kingdom of God is within you, then the kingdom has a king. And God is the king that is living in you. In the New Testament, he put it this way in Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. God is the one at work in you. Friend, if God is living in you and the one at work in you, then you are God's address. The truth is, when somebody has met the born again child of God, the person has met God. And that child of God, that should be a solution to that person that has met him. Look at what Micah chapter 3 verse 8 says. It says, you are full of power by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Full of power. It is the same power of God, that, that resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead. That's what is in you, child of God. You are the hope for the generation. You are God's address. You need to know that right away. There's a scripture I like. Colossians chapter 2 verse 10. I'll just read part of it. If you read it in the Amplified Version, it says something like, And you, the child of God in Christ, you have been made full, and you have come to fullness, and you are filled with the Godhead. That means we are filled with the Father. We are filled with Jesus Christ. We are filled with the Holy Spirit. That's the totality of divinity. So, dwelling in you as you are watching now and as a child of God is the totality of divinity. Hallelujah. That means you have the ability of God in you. Friend, you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. But how much do you know who you are? You are the righteousness of God. You are made of an endless life. You are made of the power of an endless life. And you know what? 
you should operate with the power of the word to come. The power that keeps heaven and earth. That is the power that is in you. You are God's address. You know what? You need to take advantage of the potential of God in you. The glory of, the, of God dwells in you. But what are you doing with that glory? What are you doing with that potential in you? You need to take advantage of it and display God to this generation. People are in need. They might ride the big cars. We have wonderful coats. But behind that coats, they are suffering. And you are the solution. When you pass a blind man on the street, the spirit is screaming at you. You are the solution to that problem. Friend, take advantage of the glory of God in you and display divinity to this humanity. You have been kept by the power of God, ready to be revealed in this time, today. The way Jesus made Mark that's the way you are supposed to make man. Because the way God sent Jesus, that the way God, Jesus has sent I and you, if we fail, it's not God's fault. But we shall not fail in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen to this. Obediah chapter verse 21 says, Savior shall proceed from Zion. You know what that means? You are the Savior of the generation. You are the Savior of the generation. You are the savior of the poor. You are the savior of the sick. You are the savior of the blind and the lame. You are the savior of the brokenhearted. That body woman is waiting for you because the power of God is at work in you. You must stop living below your level. You are too much for the level you are living now. You need to start living like God in this generation. He said that. God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He rules among the gods. Who are the mighty? You, the child of God, you are the mighty. Who are the gods? You, the child of God, you are gods. And in verse 5, it says, because you don't know you are God, you live your life as a mere man. You shall not die like a mere man in the name of Jesus Christ. But it is in your hands to set at liberty them that are bound. Jesus appeared and said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. What did he say? He has anointed me. He said, I'm not anointed. That's a lie. The Bible says, uh, You are anointed. 1 John chapter 2, verse 17 and verse 20. The same anointing that Jesus had, that's what you have. So the whole generation that waiting for you to display the God that you have in you. Do you know what? You can raise the dead. You can heal the sick. You can open that blind eye. You can make the poor rich. That body woman you can make to have children. Why? Because of the power of divinity. The power of God at work inside you. Yes. Yes. And yes again you can. You, you can. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11 says something. He says, anyone that speaks should speak as the oracle of God. What does it mean? He says, you should speak as the voice of God. I give you this good news. You are the voice of God. When you have spoken, God has spoken. Hallelujah. When you have spoken, divinity has spoken. And nothing can stop what you've spoken from coming to pass. Hallelujah. So, you are the voice of God. You are the power of you. You have the power of God at work in you. God doesn't have another hand. You are the hand of God. That's why God said, go and lay hands on the sick. And you know what? You can use this power as the occasion demands. He said, the wind blows where it listed. And we see the effects. So, is everyone that is born of God. That's why Peter and John can have the audacity to say, we don't have the money to give you, but we have your headache. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. They were telling the lame man at the beautiful gate. And the man rose up. Friend, 
you can do likewise. Note, you are God's address. You can manifest God. I want to read the scripture before we begin to, to round up. I want to read this scripture in Ma- Matthew chapter 10. Very interesting scripture. To show you that it's no more in God's hands. It's now in your hands. Amen. Look at what Jesus said. Verse 7. And he said, go. Say the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's not coming. He has come. It's inside you. Amen. Verse 8. Heal the sick. Look at that. He didn't say God healed. He said, can you go and heal the sick? Clean the leper. Raise the dead. Did you see that? Cast out devils. Freely you have given, received. Freely you give. Who, which means you have received this ability. Freely you should be able to deliver it to the people in need around you. So what are you waiting for? You are God's address. You carry the potential of God. Go and manifest divinity. Go and raise the dead. Go and heal the sick. Go and make people to have children. Go and make the poor rich. Freely you have received. Freely give. So, freely give. So, what do you need, you and I need to do? Pay attention to what God has given you. In this age, we watch a lot of television, we watch a lot of YouTube, we do a lot of tweeting, but a lot of those things, they do not help us to attain the goal that God has given us. He says the communication of your faith can only happen when you acknowledge the good thing in you. How do you acknowledge that? The word of God is the only window to the spirit life. So, Find out who you are from the scripture and pay attention to it. As Christ is, so are you in this world. As God is, so are you in this world. So when you have found it, think it, talk it, and do it. People might not like it. They might call you queer. You are a fanatic. But that is of little consequence. You know what? When you begin to manifest the power of God, they will come and bow down before you. That's what happened to Elisha. He was following Elijah. They laughed at him. Mumu, you should have gone this way. You should have gone this way. But when he had a double portion of the Spirit of God and Elijah, those 50 or 100 sons of prophets, they came and bowed to him. Why? Because he has taken charge. You will take charge in the name of Jesus Christ. I say you will take charge in the name of Jesus. So you are God's address. Don't run away from problems. When challenges come, attend to them. The Bible says, submit yourself to God. And resist the devil. And he will flee. You are the solution. I'll say that again. You are God's address. You are the solution. I perceive that a lot of people that are watching this have not even accepted Jesus Christ. So, you have not even started. Jesus has paid the price. You know what? God is not angry against you. They have been told, they have told you God is angry. No, he's not angry. He said he will not be angry with you, nor rebuke you. That's what he says in, in Isaiah 54 verse 9. So, God is not angry with you. The prodigal son wandered away. He prepared his sermon. But when he came, the father didn't even mention, mention one thing that you did wrong. You can come to Jesus now. You can accept Jesus. And it's just how do you do it? Jesus, I submit myself to you. Be my Lord. As simple as that. You know, Paul, he accepted Jesus by just one word. Lord, you can accept Jesus now. Do you want to do it? Just say this bit with me. Father, I thank you that you died for me. I accept Jesus as my Lord now. Thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name. Amen. That is it. You are a child of God. 
and you have divinity. Even in me. But John, there are some of you that are sick and watching now. You know what? Jesus paid the price for all those. So I want to pray. I want to pray with you. So whatever that is holding you or is paining you, or you have a problem, nothing is too big for God. Is that blindness on one eye, one ear, anything, limb, not uh, your legs, not equal, put your hand on there. Because the scripture says that when I go and preach, God will walk with me and confirm every word that I preach. So in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I give you prayer. Because you took away every infirmity and every sickness. You have already healed that blindness. You have already given children to that body. You have already strengthened those weak legs. That broken hearted you have already solved. And so I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. And never forget this. You are God's address. Jesus mighty name.